Hello and welcome. Today we are talking about a couple of new makeup items. We have the new Armani Designer Glow Foundation and we're going to talk about this. I've been using this for about a week so I definitely have some thoughts on that and we have the new Westman Atelier Lip Suede Matte Lipstick. So we're going to talk about these as well. Let's start off with the foundation. So this is the Armani Designer Glow. You can see we actually have blue here instead and there is uh, blue on the cap as well. So I, I love the blue touch. Now Armani shades in, they traditionally run warm. This definitely runs warm. There have not been, I purchased mine from Selfridges. There were not a ton of shades available. I am not sure how extensive the whole line is. Right now they only have a couple of shades available at Harrods. So we'll have to wait and see when this comes to the US how expansive the line is. But we do have SPF 15 and it's a PA triple plus plus. So this is the shade 1.5 and I have to say it's pretty warm. So we're going to swatch this right here and then we're going to take a look at the demos here so you can see the application, see what it looks like on the skin. We'll come back, we'll put a fresh swatch so you can see the oxidation. The Armani Designer Glow is a radiant revitalizing foundation. It has SPF 15, it's PA triple plus, we have a one year shelf life and it is a full one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters of product. It's made in France and according to Armani, it is a medium coverage foundation. I have to say, I think this is more of a sheer foundation, uh, definitely more light coverage. You can build it up to medium, but I think, you know, as you're building that up, it doesn't build up super evenly. So I would say this is definitely better as a lighter coverage foundation. And according to Armani, it has a radiant finish. To me, it seems more of a satin matte finish than a true radiant finish. As a matter of fact, it also feels a little bit dry on the skin. So some key details from Armani, it has hyaluronic acid and ceramides to correct dullness while acting as a dependable base for your daily makeup. As a result of continued use, the complexion looks refreshed, brightened, and feels nourished. Now, as we all know, hyaluronic acid works by attracting moisture. If your skin does not have moisture in it, it's going to kind of withdraw more moisture from your skin or from the surrounding air and so forth. So it's best to use something with hyaluronic acid in it with a moist base. So I tested this with a couple of different primers underneath. And uh, my favorite moisturizing primer is the Euphoria Pre-Game Protective Primer. So I use that one. That's a pretty moisturizing, hydrating primer. So I put that one on to see if it makes a difference really with the wear and how it feels on the skin compared to something a little bit more matte, such as the Surat Perfectionist Primer, which is another one of my all-time favorite primers. Now I have to say with both primers, it does feel pretty much the same on the skin. So uh, the... Euphoria primer, which again is dewier, will give a slightly dewier finish to skin, but as time wears on throughout the day, it doesn't feel more hydrating or anything like that. They actually both feel a little bit more dry on the skin. So texturally, or well, with the finish, this actually looks more like a satin matte finish on my skin, regardless of the primer. Now, as you can see in the demo, shade 1.5 is definitely too warm and too yellow for me, uh, but this is a shade that I have used in the past with the Luminous Glow, so, or Luminous Silk Foundation. So, uh, you know, it definitely seems to be a little bit more yellow than how I recall that one being. I do not have that one any longer to swatch, but just something to know, it definitely seems to be a bit warmer than how I recall that one being. Overall, I think this foundation is okay, but it does dry pretty quickly as you're applying it. So it can be difficult to get a very smooth finish with this without any sort of patchiness. And I think if you have the perfect color match, that's not really as noticeable. But for me, since it is significantly warmer than what my real skin color is, I feel like I can see that patchiness a little bit more clearly on my skin and it's just I think it's just okay uh, I personally I don't love this foundation I wouldn't pick it up again but I can see this being something that might work well for other people perhaps somebody with an oily or skin tone this might actually end up working out very nicely 
I like the fact that it has sort of that subtle satin matte finish to it. I think it definitely has a more matte appearance and I like that, but I just feel like it wasn't marketed that way. So at first I kept thinking, am, is, am I doing something wrong? You know, what's going on? Why does it not look radiant? I was expecting it to be a little bit, perhaps a little bit dewier, you know, definitely with a little bit more radiance since that is in the name, but uh, it really gives you more of a soft matte finish to the skin. And I think it can be a really sophisticated finish provided that you have exactly the right color. And, you know, again, I think it's definitely more of a lightweight foundation. So light, buildable up to medium, but definitely more on the lighter side. So, you know, you kind of want good skin to show through a bit. So let's take a look at the swatch now. It has been just about five minutes. So this is the one and a half after it has sat. And you can see the new swatch is significantly lighter. So there is pretty significant oxidation that happens with this foundation. And you can see we definitely have a very thin serum-like texture to this foundation. So it, Again, it feels like it's kind of evaporating as you're spreading it out. So it's definitely gonna be more of a quick drying product. I have to say, it's gonna work well for some people, but I think for most people, this is not going to be the best foundation. So I don't have any Armani foundations or skin tints any longer, but I do have their new version of the Power Fabric Concealer in 1.5. So let me just show you how different the shade is in the concealer in case you have that. So here's the concealer and this is definitely gonna be more peachy versus yellow and it's significantly lighter. So we don't have as much oxidation. I actually have this concealer on right now, but if you have been using the concealer in one and a half, just notice that the foundation shade is not going to match up with that. They don't really complement each other in my opinion either. Now, as for the foundation, we're looking at between five and six hours of wear now. So you can see coverage has remained pretty much the same, uh, perhaps a little bit of fading on the cheeks, but nothing significant. It's raining, so you know I did get wet outside, but let's bring you in. So here's the foundation. So overall, it looks about the same as it did before. But again, I don't like how it kind of kind of kind of sets those like creases and lines in my face. So overall, it's okay, but again, it's not a product that I personally love. So I hope this was helpful. Overall, for me, this foundation was a fail. It did not work out for me, but if it sounds like something that might work for you, I would definitely urge you to try to find the shades in person or definitely check out a lot of videos and things like that, swatches, so you can try to find a match because here is the concealer as it has dried versus the foundation. You can see it's definitely a significant difference in that, and I believe this was more similar to the Luminous Silk shade. So just some things to note there. Let's go ahead and move on to the Westman Atelier lipsticks. Now onto the Westman Atelier lipsticks. Before we move into packaging or anything, let me first show you what this is like on the lips. So right now I have a little bit of lip balm on underneath and this is a recommended application. So I use the Clay de Peau protective lip treatment, but Westman Atelier actually recommends using just a tiny bit of their squeaky lip balm. So let me just show you though what this does to the performance. We're taking a clean tissue here and let's just go ahead and blot. This has been on for half an hour, by the way. So you can see there, it's definitely not transfer proof. You can continue blotting. We take off all of the remaining color and let me just bring you in a little closer so you can see that. So if you blot it, you are removing kind of that top coat of the color. You get more of that matte finish. If you do not blot it after application, it stays kind of more of a shiny, more of a satin finish than what you might expect from a matte lipstick. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at the swatches real quickly and then we're going to talk about the details and my thoughts on these new lipsticks. So this is the new packaging for the lipstick. For reference, this is one of the blushes. So you can see the blush is slightly taller, slightly larger overall. And this has kind of a glossy, shiny uh, ceramic packaging versus the matte. And I have to say, since this is a matte lipstick, I actually would have preferred to have a matte finish on there because you know, usually companies who release a matte lipstick will also release a satin at some time. So I would have loved to see something glossier in the satin and something matte for the matte lipstick, but that is my personal preference. So we've got West Monatelli here. These are magnetic components. They are refillable and refills are coming for the lipsticks very soon. And as I mentioned, these are refillable. So when the refills are available, this is what they will look like. Now you can see we have kind of this honeycomb thing here. So if you have like a hex wrench or something that would fit in here to open that up, you could use it without the component, but otherwise you are going to need to have a component. I have not heard whether the components will also be sold separately. Soon. So one of the things that I do not like about this is opening it from here. This is actually pretty small. So as the lipstick starts coming up, if you have large fingers, you can easily kind of smudge or touch that lipstick as it's going up. So this is the amount of product that you get. And this one here is the shade PK. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Again, we have the West Monatelli hearts kind of going all around. This is one swipe. So you can see it's pretty opaque with one swipe, but you can build that up. So this is going to be kind of a soft, rosy caramel. It's definitely got a little bit more um, brown in there. And then Jerev, this is the shade that is on my lips right now. This is our rosier shade. And this is gonna be a rose. Now I was thinking it was gonna be a cooler tone rose and it actually is. We do have warmer undertones to this. And when you go to remove this, you can actually see it gets a little bit orangey. You can't really see it from here, but you can see a little bit. Uh, when I go to actually remove the swatches, if I'm washing that away, the soap residue and everything turns orange. So just so you can kind of see, you can see a little bit of that orange or the warmth in there. So it's definitely gonna be a warmer rose. It's a very pretty rose when you build it up. It definitely has a cooler finish on it but if you are going to wear it with a lip brush with just a tiny bit of color you'll get a warmer rose let's talk a little bit about the details of this and take a look at the lip swatches the west Atelier lip suede matte lipsticks retail for 50 us dollars they are currently exclusive to the west Atelier website but they will be available at other retailers in the near future now refills are also coming soon so there is a sign up that is on the West Monatelli website if you'd like to be notified for when those will be available. Now, according to West Monatelli, the Lip Suede lipsticks are a hydrating matte lipstick with a dreamy, airy feel and vivid, clean pigment for lips that feel as good as they look. Plump, nourish, and smooth with a blend of peptides, vitamins C, E, and their new Hydro Suede technology, which is described as a volumizing, moisture locking system that delivers matte pigment without drying or feathering. Now this is a, a vegan product. They also have no silicones, parabens, PEGs, talc, or phthalates. We have a one year shelf life on this and it is gonna be made in Italy. We have 3.8 grams of product, which is pretty comparable to something like your standard Dior lipstick, which is three and a half grams for their Rouge Dior line or something like the Hermes is three grams. So you can see we've got a little bit more product in the Westman Atelier than we do in those two in particular. Now let's talk a little bit about details I've noticed about this lipstick. So when you first put this on, there are some application techniques that they note on the Westman Atelier website. And these are things that people might not actually read. So they recommend first, if your lips are a little dry, taking a warm wet washcloth and exfoliating your lips. That's definitely kind of a must with this lipstick. You definitely want to have nicely exfoliated lips because I've tried it out without that and it definitely clings to that and makes your lips look worse. So you definitely want to have nicely exfoliated lips. Now, secondly, they also recommend using a lip balm or a little bit of their lip gloss underneath the lipstick and 
I kind of feel like that is a must. If you put the lipstick on without anything underneath as a base, as a moisturizing base, because of the hyaluronic acid in their formula here, it really kind of sucks out the moisture. It's very drying, it's uncomfortable. It ends up looking drying on your lips too. So I feel like it's, it's definitely not good that way. If you use it with a moisturizing base, like they recommend, you can get a really nice matte finish. So something like what I have on now. However, I still find that this lipstick feels drying. Even with a moisturizing base, after like 10, 15 minutes, I can feel that it feels dry. It has that very thin, uh, it's not a silicone texture, but that very thin, silky texture that feels almost like silicones. It has that texture filled with powder. So it's a very thin, lightweight, silky powder texture. But I do find that on me, it feels pretty drying. So I am not a fan of the texture. Now, when it's described as having a dreamy, airy feel, I'm thinking of something with a moussier texture. This is definitely not that. It's very thin. It is very lightweight, but again, I find it to be drying personally. And if you put this on without the moisturizing base, then it definitely starts to feel a little tight on your lips after a while. Now, one other thing I'd like to note about these lipsticks is that they have a scent to them. Now, there is no added fragrance noted anywhere in the ingredients that I can see, but we do have some ingredients in there that produce a scent, such as ethyl vanillin. So that's your synthetic vanilla. We also have kaolin. Kaolin is a type of clay that we see a lot in the face masks, clean beauty lipsticks, and so forth. And it has that strong clay scent that is kind of reminiscent of crayons. So that is part of the kaolin fragrance. And honestly, that's kind of, we've also got some like essential oils and things like that in there. But when I smell this lipstick, the primary thing that I smell is that kaolin. And I do smell some of that vanilla. And then it's almost like a clay vanilla floral mix. That's what I get from it. Now, now if that scent was just for during application and then it faded, that would be one thing. But I find that it actually hangs around. So even after you've had this on for hours, maybe I'm just sensitive to this, but I can still smell it and it's not a favorite for me. If you've ever used the Cure Weiss lipsticks, they have a very similar fragrance. Again, it's that kaolin that you're really smelling. So I would say that, you know, scent wise, that's what you're smelling. But again, it's not really added fragrance. Hey, I just wanted to come on with a quick update on the wear and everything. So I will show that to you in a second. But first, somebody wants to say hi, here's Sadie. I know a lot of you guys have asked me about her recently. And here she is pretty much all grown up. Her birthday's coming up in another month. And yeah, so she wanted to join in. She's following me around a lot right now. So now as for the Westman Atelier lipstick, this is how it wears after several hours with the lip balm on underneath. If you don't have the lip balm on underneath, it is not going to be as even. It's gonna look pretty dry. But right now it has a pretty weightless feeling. If I'm talking and using my lips a lot, you know, it stays really comfortable and natural. But if I go for a long period of time without really moving my lips, it feels a little stiff to then move them. So just something to know. I think that's just because it is a little bit dry for me. So you can see how it has worn and you can see like from drinking my water bottle, there's really not that much movement from the center of my lip. Overall, the pigmentation definitely remains for a long time. And it actually, I think it looks really nice after it's been on there for a while. So overall, I have to say the lipstick, it's not a favorite for me personally. I do find it to be a little dry. I don't like how I have to use a lip balm on underneath it for it to be comfortable. But, you know, there are a lot of other matte lipsticks that kind of have that recommendation as well. So, you know, that's not something we haven't seen before. I just find this one to be 
even more drying uh, without the lip, lip balm than other brands. So that's my personal thought on that. Again, the scent is something that is not a favorite for me or the packaging. But overall, I do think it gives a really nice look after a long period of time and the wear is really nice. So while this lipstick isn't for me personally, I can definitely see other people really enjoying it. Now, after you've been wearing these lipsticks for a few hours, if you started off with the balm underneath, they do have a pretty weightless matte feeling to them, almost as though you took like a powder pigment and you just tapped that on your lips. That's kind of the texture that you have. So for me, it does feel a little bit dry, but for others, they are gonna really like that. The pigmentation is very even and it wears evenly, which I think is very impressive. But I do think that it emphasizes lines in my lips. So I feel like I can see more vertical lines in my lips with this lipstick on than I would with nothing on. So to me, it ends up looking a little bit dry. You can definitely fix that by putting a balm or lip gloss on top. But if you're just going with the straight up lipstick, I feel like it can look a little dry. But again, the pigmentation on this is really nice and very even. So you know, it really does look good with a balm on top of it. So just something to note. Now these West Man Atelier lipsticks, they can be worn on the lips, but they can also be used on the cheeks for blush. They cannot be used on the eyes though. So just know that they are not eye safe. And in regards to the West Man Atelier lip suede little lip palettes that, you know, we've seen in the past, the formula for these, they do feel kind of similar on the lips. I actually don't have those anymore. I got rid of mine as I found them too drying. And I feel like this is kind of similar to that. They're obviously going to be a different texture, uh, but I feel like that particular characteristic of them feels pretty similar to me. So if you didn't like the little lip suede lip palettes, then I don't think you're gonna like these lipsticks. If you did really enjoy those, then this might be a good product for you. I think the colors look very nice. I like them kind of dabbed on. They're pretty opaque and deep. So they're a little bit deeper than I expected, but I do think that, you know, they look very nice on the lips and I like how you can build them up, you can pat them out and so forth. But unfortunately, I'm just not a fan of this lipstick. So the scent is something that bothers me. Uh, you know, I find it to be a bit drying or pretty dry. If you're not using the base, it's very drying. And then I don't like the component. Not only is this pretty large and bulky, which I can, I can live with, but the worst part to me is just how small this portion is and making it, it just makes it like a little bit more awkward to turn and dial this up. So not a fan of the lipstick, unfortunately. So I'd love to know if you've tried these, what your thoughts are on these. But for me, unfortunately, both the Armani Designer Glow and the West Manitalia lipsticks were fails for me. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.